Hey there, welcome back. I hope you're having a good week so far. I hope you're blessed and I hope you're in a safe place. You know, as we get into this study, I tell you, I have been so excited about this reality that we're talking about, about these new beginnings. You know, we do serve a God who is a, a God of new beginnings. And, and every chance we get, you know, we, we struggle sometimes in life and yet God gives us that ability to start over through the grace of Jesus Christ. And, and not only are we able to start over in our own mind, but God purifies us as we talked about last week. We started off with this concept of a new creation. And that new creation is every moment of every day you and I are brand new in the sight of God. And that reality, as hard as it is sometimes to believe and to understand, is true. That's how powerful the cross of Jesus is, is that it makes us pure and holy in God's sight all the time through the blood of Jesus. And that is a reality that if we understand it and hold on to it, it will change our lives every day. And so today what we're going to talk about is the next step in this newness, and that is a new attitude. If you and I are going to agree with and, and bring into our hearts this idea of a new creation, it's going to have an effect. And the effect that God wants us to have through the understanding of that reality is that it affects our attitude. You know, attitude, as they say, is everything. You and I can approach a situation with two totally different attitudes. We can even approach hardships and struggles and trials with two totally different attitudes. We can see it as an opportunity to grow or we can see things as, as defeating to us. Attitude supplies the heart. It gives us everything that we use every day to approach situations and people. This new attitude that God wants us to have is so important in our relationship with Him, with ourselves, and with everybody we have we come in contact with. The, the idea of that new attitude can be found in Ephesians chapter 4. When Paul was writing this letter to the Ephesians in verses 22 through 24, this is how he said it. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to made, be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Notice what Paul says here. He's talking about this change of life that God has intervened and interceded in our lives and has changed the trajectory of our future. Through Jesus Christ, you and I are now heaven bound. And not only heaven bound, but on this earth, we are new and we are pure in his sight through the blood of Jesus. What that should do is it should change the attitude of our minds. And that's why he talks about this change. And so you and I have an opportunity Every day we live to have the attitude God wants us to have. The attitude of a changed person, of a, of a person who has been bought by the blood of Jesus and has been saved and made holy every second of every day through the grace, blood, and love of Jesus Christ through His mercy. You and I need to recognize that. Now again, we've talked about in the past, we have an enemy, right, who doesn't want us to understand this and doesn't want us to transform our attitudes into this new attitude that he wants us to have. But we're going to talk about that today. We're going to look at it and let it challenge us. Let it sink in today to help us be able to do what God wants us to do and that is let his difference that he's made in our lives change the way we think. That's what God has been after since day one with us, is to get us to change our thinking. I had a friend of mine one time, years ago, that told me this, and I've never forgot it. He said, Christianity is actually not a set of rules. It is a way of thinking. And that he couldn't have been more right. And as I've learned through the years, that how I look at a situation has everything to do with how I approach it, how I process it, how I deal with it, and how I reflect on it. It has everything to do. And God knows that. He made us that way. So the attitude we're going to talk about today is a challenge, if we'll allow it, to help us understand and rethink our attitudes. So let's look at a part of that. This new attitude that God wants us to have, where does it come from? Well, it actually comes from God's love and acceptance 
of us. That's where this attitude comes from. And we can find a great example of that in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. Paul begins this section by saying these words. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. Now let's stop right there. You know, if we were in a court of law right now, and the, and the judge was reading the complaint against us, and he said, as a person, Kelly Campbell, you are by nature an object of wrath. You are supposed to be getting God's wrath because of the human nature and the sinful life that you are. Would I, and if you were in my place and you were accused of that, would you plead guilty or innocent? Would you say, I'm not guilty of that? Or would you understand sin in your life and in my life and plead guilty? This is so important to understanding this passage. If we just fly through this and we say, yeah, 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 whatever, we'll never get the point. What Paul is saying is, by nature, we are objects of wrath because of our sin. If we plead guilty to that and understand that in and of ourselves, we should be, by all rights, condemned to death. If we believe that, then what comes next is the best news you'll ever hear. Okay? So we plead guilty. You plead guilty, I plead guilty. Let's just say it. Guilty is charged. I want to hear you say it. Very good. Okay? If that's where you're at, let's read on. Okay? But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Does that not sound remarkable? But none of this is going to matter if we do not plead guilty to the first charge that we are by nature objects of wrath. And we do believe that's true. But now because of God's great love for us, He has taken that away through Christ and has forgiven us. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it said, we have been saved by the grace of God. And not only that, that should be enough. I should be able to say, Lord, that's plenty. I don't want to ask for more. But he goes further and says that he raised us up with Christ, seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. I want to ask you a question. What more could you ask for? What more could you ask of God than to have this be true? That we are condemned to death yet because of the love of God, because of his mercy, he's raised us up in the heavenly realms with him and has forgiven us. This is what changes our attitude. Our attitude changes because we know what we deserve. And if we know that that's what we deserve is to die, to be condemned, to be sent to hell, if that's what we really believe, as harsh as that sounds, that is the, that's the consequences for sin. And now we are not only forgiven, but we are raised up. We are with Christ in the heavenly realms through this incredible sacrifice. That should change everything. It should change everything because we know that's not what we deserve. But see, what happens when we grasp that, when we hold on to that and we say, man, how blessed I am by God, how incredibly gracious he is, then what happens is what changes us is freedom. We talked about freedom last week, and I want to talk about it again this week, because I think one of the things that Christians struggle with the most is understanding that we are free. We are no longer slaves to sin. We are slaves to righteousness. And you might say, well, wait a minute. I'm still a slave? Yeah, but I'm telling you, being a slave to righteousness is an honor. It's something that God gives us to be able to live for every day, to be a chosen vessel of God in His glory. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul talks about this freedom that changes us, that changes our attitude. Listen to this. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Freedom. And we all, 
who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into the image, right? Into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. Notice, just notice for a minute what this verse is talking about. It's talking about where God is, where the spirit is, there's freedom. You and I are in Christ, but he says that we have to contemplate that. We have to sit for a moment and consider all of this. Listen, your attitude's not going to change. My attitude's not going to change if we don't contemplate this, if we don't allow this to sink in. It's just like anything in life, right? Anything in life that's going to mean something to us, we have to understand it. And I'm telling you, I don't understand exactly how it happened. I don't understand how I am sinful as I am, that I am in Christ and I am forgiven and I'm pure and holy and I'm free. I don't understand any of that. But what I do understand is that Jesus did it. It didn't have anything to do with me. I didn't lay a finger on that one because I'm incapable of doing that. But God lets me know and he lets you know right here, right now, that if you're in Christ, you're free. You're forgiven. Even though we deserved wrath, we didn't get wrath. We got love, we got mercy, we got grace. And that should change our attitude. I'll talk about that in a moment as to how that looks like. What does an attitude change look like? But before we get to that, I want to add one more thing. And this next thing is that this attitude that we have is now our new perspective. Perspective is an interesting word because it's how you look at something, right? How I look at something matters entirely because if I look at something the wrong way I'm going to react the wrong way I'm going to do the wrong things but God challenges us to think about our perspective through this new attitude it's found in Romans chapter 15 okay it's verses 5 through 7 listen to what Paul once again says may the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same what attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. Oh, there's so much in this passage. I could do a whole lesson just on this passage. But what we want to get this this time as we talk about this new attitude, is it comes from understanding what God has done for us. If God has done all these things for you and me, if he's forgiven us, although we're not worthy of that, we don't deserve that, we deserve wrath, but we get love and we get grace, then how do we treat other people? This is the key component in perspective. It, it's understanding who we are and then turning, therefore, and looking at other people the same way. If I think I'm self-righteous, if I think I've done this on my own, then how am I going to look at other people? Critical, judgmental, right? Because I made it, why can't you? But if we understand the truth of the matter, and that is that we deserve wrath, and we've done nothing to get us out of this mess, but God and God alone through Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God has brought freedom into our lives, has purified us from sin, has taken us from the depths of despair to the, the, the realms of heaven. If I understand that God did that all by himself and I was simply the one who benefited all right, from that, then how can I ever look at somebody else? and condemn them? How can I look down on people when no one should look further down than myself, okay? Because I know who I am. I know from whence I come, right? I know my background. I know my problems. And God doesn't look at any of that. He looks at me as he looks at Jesus Christ, his own son, as pure and holy. This is a miracle. And I think, is this affecting me? Am I letting this in? So that my life becomes purposeful now, becomes a life of grace toward other people, mercy. Because that's what Jesus did for me. Am I doing that for one another? Because that's what he says here, that the attitude that you would have would be to accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you. It's a beautiful concept. This new attitude is a challenge because we have a lot of different things going on. We listen to a lot of different resources and people and things that are not telling us the truth. The Word of God's telling us the truth. 
So as we back up now, as we've looked at these things, what does God want us to know about this new attitude? What's He want us to do with it? What was, what's it going to look like? Okay. Well, let's take a look at a few things before we finish this study to help us in the week to come to consider, am I really letting this change my life? Am I just taking it for granted or am I understanding how blessed I am? Well, the first thing is He wants us to understand His grace and mercy. That's what God wants from us. He wants us to understand how gracious and merciful he has been to us so that can change our attitudes toward ourselves and toward other people. This is a true statement, and I believe this, is, I believe this emphatically, that a person is not going to be any more merciful to others than he or she believes God has had mercy on him or her. In other words, if I, don't believe, if I believe my, my, my salvation is 50% Kelly and 50% Jesus, okay, then how much mercy am I going to have on other people? 50%, okay, because I did this by myself and God took me the rest of the way. If that's what you believe about your salvation, think again, okay? Don't let that half salvation you, half salvation God be your attitude because that is a falsehood. It is a lie. We don't do anything in this process but accept it and understand that God has given it to us. So that's what he's saying. we got to know how gracious and merciful God is so that our attitude will be mercy and grace toward others. If we don't understand it for ourselves and how God has been to us, we'll never be that way to other people. But if it changes our lives, it'll change our attitude. Secondly, he wants us to be radically changed by it. Not to kind of go, hmm, that's pretty cool. All right, I appreciate that, Lord. I'm just going to go about my day, but hey, thanks for the help. No, <laughs> that's not what God wants. God wants a radical change. He wants this thing to change our entire lives, our attitude, our perspective. Because if we truly can grab hold of this, and that's the challenge. It's one thing to understand something, but it's another thing to let it in. And that's, that's where the difference is between you and me and others who aren't Christians is that we've been blessed and we need to let this soak in to change our attitudes radically, not just a little. And then lastly, he wants our attitude to reflect what? His attitude. This is the important thing. You know, the way Jesus gets reflected off of us into the world is of utmost importance. You and I need to, to grab hold of this and be thankful for it every day that we live, to be so grateful to God that he did this for us and let that transform our attitudes. The new attitude that God wants us to have, it comes through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And the next time somebody does something to you, just think about it for a minute. Think about where you've been and what you've done. As I think about those things, and hopefully that'll let us have an attitude of mercy because God's been so good to us. Hasn't he been good to you? Isn't it wonderful to have a heavenly father like this? So let's talk, let's think about this week about our attitude and catch ourselves. Let the spirit be working in our lives. The spirit loves to catch us when we have a bad attitude. Listen to him. He'll catch us and he'll say, wait a minute now. Think about it. What did God do for you? What should you be doing in this situation? It's a daily process, but that's what it's all about. We're in for the long haul, folks. We are heaven bound. So this new attitude, it's ours. It's yours and it's mine. Let's work on it this week. Come back next week and we'll talk about the next section of this new life God's given us. Hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you and have a new attitude this week.